Hey y'all, Jay Wilson from Onyx Reporting here, going over some Jet Professional basics. Um, actually today, instead of really talking about Jet Professional, we're just going to go over some really fundamental grassroots Excel knowledge that you have to have in order to be successful building Jet Reports. Um, now if you haven't guessed, obviously this is a Jet Report. Um, it is a semblance of balance sheet report that I just threw together today, right now, in about, I don't know, 15 minutes. Um, and I'm going to teach you over the course of a couple presentations how to build this report, but also um, teach you some fundamental skills that you need in order to get there. Um, if you have any questions about the content that I cover, feel free to email me at jae at onyxreporting.com. And my email pops up. <laughs> All right. So what I've done on this other page here is I made a copy of that JET report, um, but I deleted some of the unimportant stuff to really just allow us to hone in and focus on understanding cell references, which is what we're going to do today. All right. Now, over here on the right, I've um, listed out the different permutations of cell references that we can have, right? Um, I'm sure you've all at some point used a cell reference in Excel, and if I just type it in, you know, equals C4, right, C4 is a cell reference that will refer to the column C row 4. That makes sense. What's interesting to think about, though, is what happens if I copy that cell reference C4 into another cell? And, and I'm sure you guys know the position will shift. And because the position shifts, we call it a relative cell reference. Relative because um, you know, the position shifts as I move the, cell the, the function that uses that cell reference. This is going to make sense shortly, I promise. All right, C$4 and $C4 are what we'll call mixed cell references. And they're mixed because that dollar sign. Um, you can read the dollar sign as lock the dot dot dot. So in this case, um, C dollar sign four says lock the row. And alternatively, dollar sign C four says lock the column. If you don't want to think of it in terms of what is locked, you can think about what is allowed to shift. With C$4, what is allowed to shift? Um, uh, allow the column to shift. Similarly, um, when I have $C$4, in this case the column is locked, but the row can shift. And if these two concepts don't really make sense just yet, I'm, I'm almost positive at some point you've used an absolute reference. The dollar sign C, dollar sign 4 says lock the column and the row. And if you turn that the other way around, it says nothing shifts, right? Because both of them are column, both positions are locked. Okay, now how does that apply to us here in our JET reports? Um, well, we're going to use the C$4, where we lock the column, sorry, where we lock the row reference to refer to column filters. So, Here in this column, I have the balance last month, and I have the balance this month. I see now I have my dates flopped around. Let me switch those for us. Okay. Last month was 11-30-2015. Uh, today is 12-31-2015. Right here I have a function. I only want to write one function because I'm kind of lazy. I want to be able to write one function that when I copy it from row to row or copy the function from column to column, the cell reference to the date filter is always looking in the right place. So for right now, I'm just going to put in a cell reference to um, my last month, and I have to decide, okay, where do I put the dollar sign? As I copy the function from row to row 
to GL account 1120, 1130, 1140, I want the row reference to stay the same. So I'll put the dollar sign in front of the 10. Again, as I copy the function from row to row, I want it, my cell reference to stay stuck in E10 or on row 10. So I'll put the dollar sign in front of the 10. And as I copy this from row to row, we can see here the, the cell reference always stayed put. Now some of you might be thinking, well, Jay, you could have just done an absolute cell reference. You could have just said lock everything, nothing moves. But the downside to that is when I copy this function from column to column, now I have to manually change where my cell reference is located to make sure that it points at the correct date filter for today's date. And of course, I'm lazy, so I'm not going to do that. I'll take out the dollar sign and just have E dollar sign 10. And now when I copy this function from column to column, the cell reference works as expected. And again, of course, as I copy it from row to row, cell reference works as expected. So short version of the story, C dollar sign 4, lock the row reference when referring to a column filter. And of course, when I need to filter on the GL account number, a row filter, it works the other way around. In this case, in this case, I'll say lock the column reference. And allow the row to shift. So now when I copy this function from row to row, piece of cake. When I copy it from column to column, that's the million dollar question. Will it stay stuck in the correct column? And of course the answer is yes. Looking good. Now um, the last rule, you know, when do I get to use my absolute cell references, which I know and understand so well, we use the absolute cell reference to refer to what I like to call top left filters. Any filter that's up here in the top left corner, whether it's account type or I forgot to put in company equals, right? Anytime I have a cell reference referring to my top left filters, those filters are never, ever going to move. They're always going to be in the same place, regardless of if I copy the function from row to row or column to column, right? I always want them to be posted, pointed at D6, so I'll use that absolute cell reference. Okay. Then, um, just for your knowledge, um, to toggle, To toggle um, cell reference modes, use the F4 key. Again with this formatting, cut that out. Okay, to toggle various cell reference modes, we're going to use the F4 key. So here, um, I've got my function selected, and I'm just pressing F4 over again, and you can see how the position of that dollar sign is moving. I'm toggling the various cell reference modes. All right, surely you guys don't want to see me put fake functions into action. So I'm going to show you real quick, like, exactly what I'm talking about in the jet function wizard. Let's toss our report into design mode, and let's make ourselves a jet function. So here, I'm going to calculate the sum from the GL account table. I'm going to calculate the balance at date. Okay, I don't want you guys to get carried away worried about what's NL sum, what's the GL account table, what's balance at date. What I really want us to focus on is understanding these cell references. Okay, so I'm putting in a filter for number. The account number is in one, or sorry, in C13. And like I said, for row filters, we're going to use the dollar sign in front of the column because when I copy the function from row to row, I want the row reference to change and the column reference to stay put. 
when I put in my date filter function, sorry, when I put in my date filter, filter, in this case, I'm referring to a column filter up here in E10. So I'm going to lock the row reference. Then lastly, <clears throat> as I put in my top left filters, these are in the top left, they are always staying put, they never move, I will always make these absolute cell references. Now I get a number and the proof is in the pudding. What happens when I copy my function from row to row? It works like magic. All right, so that gets us to the end of our presentation. My name's Shay Wilson from Onyx Reporting. We're going over some JET professional basics. Today, what we took a look at were just really basic um, permutations of cell references and when to use them. Uh, you'll notice I didn't say anything about using relative cell references. I actually use them very sparingly in my JET reports. I guess when we get to the, you know, the easy peasy stuff like calculating variance, sure, you can use um, the relative cell reference that we know and love. Um, but in most cases, for all of your JET reports, you're going to use variations of mixed or absolute references to refer to your column row or top left filters. If you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to me at jae.onyxreporting.com. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.